Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm using my headset mic again, just for convenience, and hopefully this time the quality will be much better since I'm recording it with OBS again instead of pictures of the PowerPoint. So today we're finally going to be able to work with entities with vScript and Hammer. The last two tutorials we have covered how to create a logic script entity and assign it to a script, create a vScript which prints to the console, and we'd understand the difference between the print and the printl method. In the second tutorial, we learned what pseudocode is, the different versions of that algorithm using pseudocode, and basic knowledge, if, else if, switches, while loop, do while loop, and ternary operators. We will come to for and for each loops once we learn about collections and arrays, but that's not needed until then. After the tutorial, you'll be able to change certain objects' abilities. You'll be able to use Squirrel to target these entities. You will learn what good practice of modular coding is. You'll understand what an enum is and how helpful it is for you for coding. And for the next one, you'll be targeting specific functions for more object control flexibility. We will understand fully what procedures and functions are, which is good modular practice and what global and local variable scopes are. So here is the input and output window when you create an object. And above is the int fire command that we're gonna use. So the first one is target string or string target. This is the object that we want to activate or use. And it's notified using this window here which would be this here. We are not worried about this, since this is an event. We don't care about the event, but this event would target this. The second one is action, which is also a string data type. This is the third box, and this is the target that we want to use, or action. The third parameter is a value that is type of string. And it is the fourth box, and is usually above here. This is extra parameters, if you need any. But usually this will be left empty. But depending on what you want to execute, or what settings you want to change, you'd add additional parameters here. Fourth one is float, which is a delay, which has a point. So this is not a whole number. And it is the fifth box here with the delay. Notice as there is a default parameter value. This means we don't need to add this in. So we can leave this blank or not included at all. If we do want to add a delay, we change this to what delay we want with a point value. And notice as handle activator has default value of null. So we don't need to include this either, unless you need to. But commonly, you don't need to add this. And here is the function. So you have our target. You have our action. We have any additional inputs we need. This will be blank, since we don't have any. And delay, which would be 0, 0 0.00 default. The goal of this tutorial is to activate a lamp. So we will toggle on and off a lamp with a prop static with a light entity. We will activate our script with a trigger multiple to toggle the lamp. We will do this by creating two modular procedures, turn light off and turn light on. We will use the end fire command to target and toggle the light on and off. And we will be learning enum data type for some nice sugar syntax to sweeten our code. And you soon figure out why enums are really useful. So using the same map from the first tutorial, I've created a lamp, which is a prop static, and a light, which we named lamp. We need this to target the entity. Without a name, we're not possible to do this. Our trigger is just simply a texture of a block with the trigger texture. Then once you highlight the Entity, Control T, and then we can create a trigger multiple. Then in outputs, we create on end touch, which turns on 
and off the lap as it is. Our logic auto runs the script to turn it on and off. So what we want to do is change this into cold in Hammer. Let's run the map and see what happens. So let's just select anyone. Right there. So if I turn on Matt Fulbright, I can see the map with all the lights disabled. Notice this is black because the light is usually makes it like that. So we're not worried about that, we're worried about the trigger. So we need to somehow find the trigger. So I'm going to disable Fulbright and notice as now we can make the lamp go on and off and you can see it reflects from the player there. So this is just using a trigger and the fence. But what we want to do now is to trigger this using our code and to use an enum to make it easier. What we want to do is see what we want to change. So we don't care about the output. This is what activates it. We only care about the four things above here. The target entity, the target input, the parameter, and the delay. So let's open Visual Studio Code, or any code editor. Notice as I have a modular procedure called Turn Light On, and the other modular procedure called Turn Light Off. This is the command, and fire. We're going to target the lamp. We're going to target the input, which we will turn on the lamp. And we're going to leave the parameters of two with an empty string, since we don't have any parameters with the turn on method. Same with the turn off method. There's no parameters needed. Notice as I don't have a delay, because remember on the default value, it's set to 0 0.00 automatically for us. But we can change that by adding a float value. So we can have a delay of one second. I'm going to go back to my logic auto and copy this. So now I don't need to have those two events, as now we have a script that does it for us. Let's change on start to on instead of off. Hit apply, no delay, cancel, and save. Now let's rerun the map. Just a heads up, you don't need to add an F for a float. You can just leave it as an integer for now. Notice as there's a delay of one second, and now we go off. It takes a one second delay, and when I come back on. So now we set it as a one second delay from going on, and one second delay going off. But we can make this far better by using the enum. So now let's comment out the original ones and bring back these ones. Notice as we now have a light status of on and off. This is kind of like validation. It doesn't prevent us from making mistakes. And this is created using an enum tag, data type. We call it light status. We have two variables of on and off. This will prevent us from making any mistakes, so it's more better. Enums always start with an index of zero, but you can assign them with a number. If you want to do, for example, months, so enum months. So we can do that, so we can assign it to values. So originally this on would be zero if it was a number, and off would be number one if it's a number. You can toggle it by using a switch or an if statement. This procedure called toggle light carries a parameter called status. This status is our light status. So we can 
do a switch statement on status and do cases. So if status is case status on, we can turn on the lamp. If status is light status off, we will turn off the lamp. Now let's try the same thing with toggle light, but with using the enum light status parameter. There is no delay. Notice as it's instantaneous. So now that's us able to do it from a trigger and we are able to control this entity using vscript. And that's the end of the tutorial.